Every year in Asshole Olympics, you win gold medal. Welcome to another semi-part exclusive look at future content landing in your Steam download queue sometime in the near future. It's the Turtle and Vault Mega Preview. I don't feel great in that now. We'll have a look at the newest map themed on a monetary institution, but first we'll take a look at the long-anticipated addition to the Merc Roll Call, and it's none other than Turtle. Before we start, I have to say that all the footage in this video is captured from development builds of Dirty Bomb. Everything could be subject to change, nothing is finalised. Let's just say that it's been a while since the last Merc launch. You know, a while. We saw Thunderland with a quite bit less than a rumble, and since then it's been pretty quiet. All worry no longer, as it seems we're on something of a roll from these splash damage devs. Hot in the heels of Dockyard, we now see Turtle come into view. The original art that we've seen over the years certainly has influenced how Turtle looks today. He's a Turkish engineer who's been around the block a few times and gotten a replacement robotic arm to show for it. You can also see that the concept for his shield has varied quite a bit from the original design. That waist height wall we've all been expecting, and let's be honest, sort of dreading because it just looks like the perfect troll tool has been replaced by this hollow light field shield thing that we'll have in-game in the near future. I don't think I'm overstating it when I say that this new shield can have as big an impact as an aura health station on the course of a match. Used well, it can be a hugely impactful tool. The shield doesn't block movement at all, but blocks incoming fire, thunder concussion effects, and even phoenix healing pulses but all friendly fire passes through unaffected. Initially, you're probably thinking, this sounds like the perfect tool for snipers. It's actually a perfect counter as well. The shield has 500 health, with two main augments affecting how it works, steady and extender. They add an additional 20 odd percent to the shield's health or size. For most situations, I'd say the extra health that steady adds is the option to take unless you have a very specific location in mind that requires that extra coverage. It has a deploy time too, so don't imagine that this is a riot shield that you can insta plonk down. It takes time to set up. And in fact, top tip here, if you see someone planting a shield, fire at the base quickly. You can often DPS down the deployable before the shield actually activates. It's much easier than trying to kill a full health shield. Turtle feels pretty good to play too. His main weapons are the Hotchfur, SMG9 and Kek-10, and think Bushwhacker in terms of movement and health. For the shield, 500 HP plus 20% for the Steady Augment does sound like a lot, but it takes careful placement to make the most of the shield. Basically, you don't want too many people to have line of sight at any one time. 600 HP divided by 6 enemy team members equals not a lot of DPS that each of them have to do to kill that shield almost instantly. So places like hallways are perfect. You're probably going to only engage one or two enemies at a time unless they have a coordinated push. But you're going to have the advantage of firing through the shield while they try to take it down. There's a bit of an obstructed view while firing through the shield, but to be honest I didn't find it too bad. In fact, I'm appreciative that snipers will have a tougher time peeking through the hollow light defences, as there needs to be some kind of trade-off when you choose to stand somewhere safe to fire from. There's loads more detail about positions and counters to go into, but that'll have to wait for a more in-depth turtle video on release. We have other financial matters to discuss. You know what I like about you? Everything. So let's segue beautifully into the map formerly known as Heist, but now, like Prince, has chosen to change its name for creative reasons. It is now Vault, and would you believe it, there's a ruddy great big vault in the middle of the map. The attackers start off outside what might be any London tube station. They need to push forward to some AA missile batteries, disable them, blow open the vault, and then carry two drug samples slash data stick slash milk jugs to the final delivery point. It's odd. I'd like Dockyard, 
You know, there's much to do, it feels fairly balanced, and there's lots of detail. But it somehow doesn't have the joy that Vault has. Vault feels at times almost like a wolf enemy territory map, or even a return to Castle Wolfenstein map. There's like ornate buildings with overlooking areas, high ceilings and so on. It feels new and yet familiar to a slightly older guy like me. The art team have really outdone themselves too. The first section especially really has that London feel as you run through the streets. The column facade on the bank also echoes real architecture. There's plenty of small details and cool touches to make the world feel real. You might argue that inside the bank feels a bit like a warren initially. I'd probably suggest they change some of the lighting colours in some of the rooms as a sort of visual semi-subliminal indication of where you are. It feels okay when you know a route to the centre, but jump off a balcony in the middle of a firefight or run up some stairs that are symmetrically laid out to another set of stairs and it can be a little bit disorientating. Inside the vault looks great as well. It almost feels like the inside of some crazy reactor rather than a bank vault. And it contrasts well when it's used as the final attacker spawn location as they grab the objective and run into the streets of London. If I'm honest, I'd say the final part of the map is currently the weakest. It somehow feels a bit awkward to both attack and defend on. If the attackers keep pressure up, then the defenders tend never to really get a foothold and it's kind of game over. However, if the defenders manage to stall the attack, it's almost like it's then tough to get any proper purchase for the attackers. All the routes feel precarious to attack along. It doesn't have the flow that the rest of the map has, and so it stands out a bit more. I'm looking forward to seeing how Vault plays when it goes live. I hope that that wolf enemy territory feel persists and how a new generation of gamers like that style of map. I'm interested to know what you think of both Turtle and Vault. Are they as you imagine the next Merc and maps to be added to Dirty Bomb? Leave a comment in the section below now and let me know your feelings. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd also like to say thank you to the Splash Damage devs and the tireless testers on the Dirty Bomb PTS. Simply wouldn't be able to make these videos without their help and support. If you'd like to support me, then please consider pressing that thumb up button and tapping that subscribe button. It's free, it helps me grow my channel and do more videos in the future. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, I'm at LCTRGames. There's a link in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.